the symptom Absolutely. of the problem, which really speaks to what you just said. Well, a number of things come up as I listen to this anecdote. One is um, the compassion that's required for people to open up and to actually heal. And so one of my teachers says, only when compassion is present will people allow themselves to see the truth. And so I know that one of your three core values that you often talk about is compassion. And that's what this man needed, to be able to open up and share and to look at himself honestly. That's the first thing. The second thing is, when you study um, people addicted to pornography, they're not actually after the pornography. It's not about sex. It's about, um, it's about a temporary spike of dopamine in their brain. Dopamine being the brain chemical that makes us feel alive and vital and present and excited and curious. Now, so then there was something happened to this man to shut down that mechanism. So he needed the extreme stimulation and titillation of pornography to, to get that dopamine spike so he can feel really alive. He just wanted to feel alive. That's all he wanted. Then he connects with the boxing community. And he gets himself going physically, and he gets his engagement with the group. All of a sudden, he gets his needs met in a much healthier way. So, again, uh, to, 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 to criticize him and ostracize him and to shame him as he shamed himself, he just wanted to feel like a normal human being. That's all he wanted. And that's the thing with addictions there's a, a certain hierarchical kind of preference. We give to them. You know, certain things are acceptable addictions, mm. certain things are not. You know, pornography is not an acceptable addiction. Yeah. Heroin uh, is not an acceptable addiction, but it's okay to be addicted to Instagram. It's okay to be addicted to consumption, shopping. Or power. Or power. Yeah. One of the big messages I feel the new book really makes a strong case for is that we're living in a society that has its, its core some values that are not conducive to good physical, mental, and emotional health. Right. And it takes a lot of pressure off the individual. It doesn't yeah. mean that the individual could do nothing about it, but I think it helps people realize why they're struggling so much. Well, I know that a real core value for you is the authenticity. You know, and then being oneself, but I know that you've been through some struggle in your own life to become yourself or to realize who you were and to let go of what wasn't. And certainly that's been my pattern and struggle and, and commitment as well. This is a society that fundamentally demands of people that they be other than who they are. Because the demand, the expectation is that we fit in into structures and workplaces and educational institutions and families and you know, the social settings where if we ourselves we risk being rejected. So that there's almost a universal demand for self-suppression, which is we both, you and I know, uh, creates both mental and physical health problems. So that the core values of the society which are fundamentally materialistic, individualistic, aggressive, and competitive, they go against what it really means to be a human being. And when you look at how we evolved as human beings, like if you want to study a zebra, where would you study him? If you want to understand his true nature, would you study him in the London Zoo? Would you study him out in the savannah or wherever he, you know, he, he or she lives? Well, you'd have to study him in the natural environment. In our natural environment, I'm talking about eons and millions and hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, and even about 90% of our own existence as a species, we lived out in nature in small band hunter gatherer groups. Yeah. Connected, engaged, belonging, connected to nature, connected to our gut feelings. We had to be, otherwise we wouldn't survive. Yeah. That's what it means to be a human being. Now, we can adapt to other, other environments, but that doesn't mean that we can thrive in them as well. And so that, in a sense, what I'm saying about our species, we're, li we're like zoo creatures right now. Yeah. We're living in an unnatural environment. I'm not suggesting we go back to being hunter-gatherers, but I am suggesting we realize what we've lost and how the particular social system in which we live right now demands that we stay lost. Yeah. That's my whole point. Once our eyes get open to this, yeah. because as you mentioned, for much of my life, I've been blind to this. Yeah. You know, I, I felt that success was important, being competitive was important, being a winner yeah. was important. And yeah. as I've shared a lot of these behavioral adaptations to my own childhood, 
I find an inner sense of peace and contentment mm. and calm that I never had before. Yeah. And actually what's really interesting is as you do that, a lot of the addictive tendencies I had, they which, fall away. They fall away. Yeah. Not because you're trying to. That's right. You're not trying to stop the addiction. This is kind of what I feel a lot of the time with, let's say something like alcohol. And as medical doctors, we say, you know, this is the limit. You know, you should drink under 14 units of alcohol a week or whatever it is, which frankly I find a lot of public health guidance quite unhelpful. I understand the need for it. But A, it's dry. B, there's no understanding within that yeah. of what role does the alcohol play in that person's life. And yeah. I feel the classic case of something like alcohol is New Year. You know, people sign on January the 1st that this year's going to be different. I'm, right, I'm not going to fall into the trap I fell in before. I'm going to cut down my intake. And, you know, they do for the first week and the yeah. second week. And they, they, they're not drinking at all. But by the third week, you know, when the stress of work is still there, yeah when the toxic relationship that they're in is still there, when the boss that doesn't value them is still there, it starts to creep in because the alcohol is playing a role, right? Serving a need and coming back to this cultural point, you mentioned where would you study a, a zebra, Yeah. right? I think there's a key point here, you know, who are we as humans? Yeah. Many of us feel that we are competitive, right? And conversation is something I think a lot about, yeah. right? As someone who used to be competitive, who is yeah. no longer competitive, really, yeah. I can put my hand in my heart and say, yeah. I'm not competitive anymore. Yeah. That was a that was a trait I developed. That's right. But some people say conversation is natural, and I I guess and my view is that it comes down to the relationship you have with that competition. So can you speak a little bit to competition? Well, yeah. Well, first of all, I know something about your personal history, which is that you know being um, immigrants from the subcontinent here to to the UK and your parents, with all their goodwill, they put this pressure on you to excel. Yeah. That, that if you were, I think I heard you say once that if you only got 99% of the test, your mother would say, what's wrong? What did you offer? You can get 100. You have yeah. to be the best. You have to be the best. Yeah. Now, they did that out of their anxiety that you just succeed in this world in which you came with some disadvantage being immigrants and maybe people of color as well, you know? But as a result, you become competitive. That's not your nature, that's just your second nature. But even in the phrase second nature, there's an implication that there's a first nature. And 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 the first nature is you just are a human being, you want to belong. Now competition, it depends what the intention is. If it's a competition, in the sense that you want to manifest your best. Lexington, Kentucky. Just look at it. It's the bluegrassiest, the bourbonist, horsiest place in the world. Looking for the coolest, most Kentuckiest getaway? Look at Lexington. And in a sense, you're competing with yourself. Yeah. Not to be better than anybody else. Not to beat or to dominate or to subjugate or exclude somebody else, but just because you just want to be your best. Well, that's, that's great. The idea that we're individually competitive creatures really comes along with the rise of capitalism, which is a system based on competition where it is dog-eat-dog -dog, and where the bigger fish do swallow the smaller ones. And as we can see this happening right now with the tremendous rise of inequality in the last decades, you know, eight people in the world now control as much wealth as the bottom 50% of humanity. Now, the interesting thing about human nature is that when people do something selfish or aggressive or competitive, what do we say? Well, that's just human nature. But when people do something selfless and generous and kind, nobody says, oh, that's just human nature. So there's an assumption in this culture. And what we do is we take the core values of a particular materialistic culture and we project them onto human beings as if that was our true nature. It isn't. And to the extent that we try to conform to it, we create suffering for ourselves and for others. You know, now, competition as between Liverpool and Manchester City, in this capitalist world, even that gets pretty vicious, not in the sense of the players being vicious, but in the sense of how can we get the best players in the world and who can pay the most money for the 
best striker and where will Hagelin go, will go to Manchester City or Arsenal, you know. It, even on that level, what is meant to be play, we talk about playing football, but it's no longer play. It becomes a business of dominating others. So, whereas it could be just play, which is, and in play, there's no consequences to who wins and who doesn't. Yeah. It's just for the process, it's just for the enjoyment, it's just for the sheer pleasure of the activity. The human beings are meant to play. There's a circuit in our brain that's designated to play. Play is essential for human development, for human child development, for the brain development. But even the play, we've been into a competitive cutthroat yeah. endeavor. Yeah. That's how far denatured we've become. I don't know if you are familiar with Johnny Wilkinson, probably one of the world, certainly one of England's most famous rugby players ever. When Johnny was a little boy, yeah. he wrote down his dreams on a piece of paper. He said, I want to play for England, I want to win the World Cup. Mm. Now, the problem for Johnny is that by the age of 24, he'd achieved his dreams. Mm. Right? So, yes, he plays for England, and then he helps England win the World Cup in the most fairy tale mm. situation. He kicks the winning goal in the final minute of the World Cup final. Wow. The sort of thing that kids all over the world now would dream about doing. He did it in the age of 24. The problem is, is that he said, as the ball left his boots, even before it had gone through the goals, he starts to go down. I get it in his mind. The following morning, the same they won the World Cup, first time in years. National hero, I've been out of bed, lonely, depressed. I find his story incredibly fascinating because he ticked the boxes of what society says you need to do to be happy and successful, yet it left him with this inner turmoil. And he said something to speak out, he said many things, but one thing in particular I remember is he said, I used to play rugby for the joy of the game. Is to play. At some point, it changed from being joyful and playful to being something that said something about who I was. Yeah. And he thought winning would say something about him. And his relationship to rugby changed. Yeah, it's a really incredibly powerful story, and it illustrates a point that I've often made is that there's two common ways to wake up. One of them is to fail, but in even more dramatic ways to succeed. Because then you realize that you've got what you wanted and it's empty. Yeah. Because it's all been external. And so in a 